Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Holy Spirit so that, by, that we may live lives and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made our lives together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have fulfilled this, all this earth with the light of your incarnate word. By you, grace empowered us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our children's message today, I got to thinking about the words that we use when we're talking with each other, words that we use when we're talking about ourselves. And I got to wondering, do we always use kind words? Or can our words sometimes be a little hurtful? And in our lesson today from John's Gospel, we hear that Jesus is the word that brings life. And that, not only that, the gift of Jesus to us and in us through baptism means that we share this attribute with God, that what we speak has the capacity to build people up, but it also has the capacity to tear people down. And I got to wondering, I wonder if maybe we couldn't practice using kinder words with each other. Can you think of any kind words that you could use to describe yourself or someone else? Think of those words. Go ahead and say them now. How about smart or helpful or bright? You could comment on all sorts of different things about people that could help to build people up. So that's my challenge for you this week. Find a way with your brother or your sister or your parents or grandparents or a friend or somebody you meet out in the world around you and say something kind to them. And in doing so, help to bring the light and joy of this season more deeply into their hearts. And what we'll discover is experiencing God more deeply in our relationships with each other. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you for loving us. Help us to use kind words that build up and show your love. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, grace and truth 
came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God speaks in the beginning and creation happens. New order breaks through the chaos. John's beautiful opening hymn, our reading for this morning, I believe is designed to intentionally mirror the creation story from Genesis so that the listeners, every time and every place, will they connect the ongoing work of, of Christ with the work of God, the God of the universe in creation. John tells us that Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the speech of God into creation that has existed from the very beginning when God spoke and the seas divided and creatures emerged. God speaks and when the word of God enters creation, things begin to happen. This is often called the divine logos, this God word or word of God. And John makes an audacious claim that this word of God, that God speaks at creation, that word was and is Jesus. Jesus is the God word the divine logos that was there in the beginning when God created. And God and Jesus is then the God word who comes alive in the world around us and opens more clearly the relationship between the creation and its creator. Jesus puts, puts flesh around this God speaking so that we might see more fully and connect more deeply with God's creative and redeeming work, which was evident from the origins of creation and continues through our time as well. The word of God, this cosmic Jesus, opens to us the very identity of God. But not only that, draws us in to the very identity and personhood of God's own self and in doing so connects us more closely with God's purpose for us in this creation. And my sense is that, according to John, the purpose of the creature is actually to join into the creative process. And it shows us the power of word, the power of communicating. In Jesus, God communicates, reveals, opens who God is to that which God has created. And I can't help but to wonder that in looking back at our Genesis reading that connects to our John reading today, if to be made in the image of God means that we have also words, words that can create They have the potential to mirror God's work of bringing order out of chaos and hope out of hopelessness and new things into being. I wonder if we are then God bearers, the carriers of the word of God out into our neighborhood and community. I wonder if our purpose then isn't to be the ones who have first received the word of God and then are called to share these words of God with others in a way that they bring light and life to all creation, and they heap grace upon grace upon grace into the lives of those we come in contact with. This means then that God's presence in this creation is intimately tied to the words that we use in our own lives. The words we have have a powerful impact And we can use our words to build up, but we can just as easily use our words to tear down. 
Our words have the capacity to invite others into seeing more fully, more clearly, the very presence of God. Our words have the capacity to invite people into relationships of light and life and joy. And at the same time, our words can be a roadblock for others to enter into the full presence of God. Our words, when they are joined with God's purposes, ignite new possibilities in creation. And they usher us into our very purpose of participating in the creative process of bringing light into the lives of people and into the whole world through the words that we speak. I think we already know this to be true, though. What's the old children's adage? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. My sense is that this is trying to hold back what we already know is true, and that is sticks and stones might hurt, but those words that people speak about us and to us, those last a lot longer than bruises and cuts. The truth is that the words that we speak about ourselves and about our neighbor have powerful implications in how we see ourselves and how our neighbors see themselves. Recently, we've been watching as there's been congressional hearings with Facebook and Instagram. And what we're learning is both those social media platforms did studies and knew how damaging those platforms for conversation and words and images were on the mental health of young people. The overconsumption of these detrimental words, these hurtful words, these negative things have really caused a great deal of mental anguish, I would argue, amongst all people. Why? Because the words have power. And maybe it's true that even though Facebook and the like may have been designed to share positive, kind, uplifting words, in the end these platforms have not done so very well. And particularly our young people, but all of us, probably overconsume hours and hours of these words that bring one cohesive and damaging message right to our very heart. And that is, you are not enough. You don't have enough. You're not good enough. You're not good looking enough. You're not smart enough. You are not enough. And this is the word that the world teaches us about ourselves. So what happens then? We spend time jockeying with each other to feel worthy, to feel like we are enough. We fight with each other and we use our words in anti-God word ways. The undivine logos, when we push other people down in order to help ourselves feel better. The truth is that our overconsumption of negative words causes us to depart from our created purpose to build others up. And instead, our anxiety and our fear about not being enough causes us to push others down. I'm sure the scholars will never entirely agree, but it seems to me that when Jesus enters creation, a few things happen. One, God's Continu God continues to expand the creative and redeeming work designed to enter more people into these promises and these God words so that more people can hear this message of God's unconditional love. And two, we learn from the life of Jesus what life-giving words really look like, what they sound like, what happens in people's lives when they hear that they are enough and they are loved. And three, we are reminded powerfully that we are co-creators with God. We are co-word bearers for the world. And that what we say and what we do 
Well, it matters immensely for the creative process that we are in the midst of. Jesus shows us both what it looks like to speak God-filled words into creation and shows us also that it is possible that when we are held with grace-filled words, we discover the depth of God's love for us more and more each and every day. Today is January 2nd. This means that many of us have already had a chance to break our New Year's resolutions in just the first two days. So I might offer another option for us. Maybe together we could commit to more life-giving words, more kind words spoken to ourselves and to the people around us. Maybe together we can commit to turning off those empty and hurtful words, tuning out those places where we hear those words telling us that we are not enough, and find ways to use our relationships around us to build others up, to tell them over and over again and show them with our hands that they are enough and they are worthy because we are loved by God unconditionally. And in doing so, we can become co-creators of this God, word, light, and life that the whole world is heading toward. And I believe that such a thing is possible because God comes near. This whole season of Christmas, of which we're in the second Sunday of, is about what happens to our lives when God comes near, when God comes alive within and around us. And this is what makes God's words possible. This is what makes grace upon grace words possible because we are not doing this work alone. In fact, maybe what we need more of is a more openness to the words of God that are already there, ready to bubble over into the surface. That we might feel the gentle nudge of the Spirit within us that moves us away from anxiety and fear and hatred moves us away and tunes us out, tunes out the messages that say you are not enough and instead moves us more and more into the place where we hear the message of God's unconditional love, what we call grace, and hear that this is a message that our world desperately needs more of. Might we challenge ourselves to find those kind, grace-filled God words for the sake of the world around us, because I believe the world around us and we ourselves desperately need to hear it. The good news of our text today is that God has come near. And in in doing so, God opens the possibility for us to co-create positive goodness in our world. Might we find those God words for ourselves and the God words for the world in need around us. Amen. Lord Jesus, see your infant weak. Why come to earth as one so meek? A newborn babe, helpless and small, and yet create.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have fulfilled this, all this earth with the light of your incarnate word. By you, grace empowered us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Join our voices with the heavenly hosts and Christians throughout the time and space. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You make yourself known in the gifts of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, technology, and languages other than English. Make your choice a, a church a place where communication is encouraged and celebrated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Provide opportunities for this congregation to serve so that all are loved and supported. Awaken us to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name, we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children, help them to navigate the adoption process especially those in the foster system. Sustain those who struggle with infertility in or pregnancy loss. Tenderly embrace all in need, especially our homeland and those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those who are making transitions in their families, workplaces, and communities. We give you thanks for all who modeled lives of loving service, especially William Lowell, who we commend today. 
Let us in your grace, lead us in your grace until with all your saints we enter the fullness of your glory. Through your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice in your word made flesh among us. We commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. peace serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.